Hi everybody, welcome to In the Trenches at Victory Church in Scurry. We are in the gift of legacy, but this week we are going to be in the Likelihood Principles, which is going to be for two weeks. It's going to be covering Proverbs 22.6. If y'all want to get y'all's Bibles out and look that up, it's uh, train up a child in the way it should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. We're also going to be in Genesis 18, 17, verses 17 through 19. And while you're getting that out, I'm going to introduce my friends here. Um, Matt, the, one, of the, one of the regular hosts that you have seen. Uh, Matt, what are you laughing at already? I just don't, I don't know you what's don't, about to come out of your mouth. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so our fun fact for the day, that he wants beat Mr. Rogers in a bowling match. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Would you be mine? Oh, man. That's what he was talking about, that 10th pin. He couldn't get that down. But anyways, Matt, Matt's here with us, and uh, Ross is new to y'all. He is not new to us here at Victory. He's one of, the, one of the main teachers up here. And a fun fact for him that he don't want me telling y'all, but he was that guy with the cowboy hat, the security guard that run ringside uh, across with uh, Kerry Von Eric. Well, I always hold the, I hold the string up at uh, the Sportatorium. Yeah. That was a yeah. long time ago. Man. A long time ago. Yeah. yeah, me and Fritz, we like this. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, hopefully, Chris, <laughs> hopefully y'all got y'all's Bibles open now, uh, that y'all prayed up and ready to listen to some knuckleheads, try to give y'all some words of, of wisdom today. Again, we're in, the, we're in the gift of legacy and the likelihood principles. So today we are going to cover uh, the, I'm having a, I'm having a blank. Proverbs 22, 6, train up the child the way it should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. The likelihood principles, Matt is going to read to us. Uh, the likelihood principle just says this, in the context of healthy relationships, and that's, that's key to the likelihood principle, which we'll get into that later, but in the context of healthy relationships, children tend to embrace the beliefs and values of their parents. Now, this is a principle that ties in with Proverbs 22, 6, and we need to understand that it's a principle, not a promise. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. It's, it's right. just a principle. It's a, it's a good suggestion. The title of this lesson this week is Playing the Odds, and uh, the way I like to look at that is just you're giving them a chance. Yeah. You know, you're doing what you can do as mom and daddy to give your kids the best chance possible. So, Right. This... Um, this study this week, you know, I, I studied on this and studied on this on if you're a grandparent, you know, you can use your wisdom of how you did wrong and teach your children how you did right by not only reading the Word of God, but applying it to your, to your kids' lives so they can apply it to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Now, there's this uh, example in here that's a Dear Abby example. Somebody wrote in and said, my 17-year-old is drunk and high all the time, or I think she is, and... Uh, what do I do? Well, they said take 16 and a half years off of her and start over. We know we can't do that. We have to, as Jesus says, come as you are. We have to love somebody where they're at. But we have to, it's better for us to start with before they're seven and eight, before they're three, at the, at the age of um, where they know from right from wrong. So from that, we're going to start off. We're going to start with uh, the mind and what the secular agenda is. The mind is uh, the secular agenda is to train a child for the world priorities and to uh, to succeed in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, Genesis four, Cain's descendants. You know, about what did what does Cain's descendants try to do? They just lived for the world that was now. They didn't. Uh, they were like, if it feels good, do it. Uh, didn't follow God's principles. That's right. And then, and then five, you remember what, what was going through Seth, which is lineage of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they was going through the world to come, right? Right. <clears throat> so in the mind, uh, we, have to, we have to try to um, change the mind of the kid that wants to go secular into the mind of somebody that wants to follow the principles of God, right? That's right. Okay. I think, uh, you know, just the sin nature... Children are bent towards sin. You don't have to teach a kid to lie. Uh, they lie uh, just because they, they're afraid. They're afraid of getting in trouble. And, uh, and I think that that's where we're all, we're all starting at the same place with every child. Um, they're just a little sinner. Right. 
Yeah, they're and they're also trained that. Hey, I was saying in class today that somebody wants to steal, they know that it's wrong to steal. That's why they're looking around. So they sure. give us conscience on both of them, which I think is further down in in the lesson that's talking about what came out of the fall, um, the great fall. That we had conscious, we had all these other things. What is that? That was in the heart, wasn't it? <clears throat> so we're, we're going against. We're going uh, right. ahead of ourselves. You just keep. You just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take it for a second? <laughs> well, I think it. I think it all intertwines together. Yes, we have different. The mind, the will the heart and the conscience, but right. there are similarities that you can overlap in each mm -hmm. one of those uh, categories. That's right. So. so that goes to the heart. So the heart, uh, we have the love, the hate, all the emotions, laugh, cry, desire, fear, hope, and we, we deal with the contradiction because of the fall. The parents must embrace those things of God and teach them to loathe the things of this world. Mm -hmm. It's and good. What does loathe mean? To like hate. To hate, okay. I think. I mean, it's. Yeah. I really don't like it. Yeah. So. yeah. Definitely, I really don't like. Yeah. Like, I loathe. Really? I loathe. You know, fruit. Uh, what is that? Fruit cake. Yeah. I loathe that. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> really? I don't like it. Wow. That's a good word to don't, know. Hey, don't ever give me a fruit cake. I love you because you gave me something, but I, I'm not going to eat it. He's going to give it away to somebody There's else. So <laughs> many jokes there, man. I'm just saying. Uh, Leave the fruit cake alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Moving right along. So we're going to uh, not like that. <laughs> we're going to not like the things of this world. We're going to uh, teach them to love it. Okay, so I had an example in that. If you go to, if you got your godly kids and you're bringing them, you're supposed to be a lot of the world, right? You you see somebody, you you uh, interact with people. Let's say it's a relative, a friend, whatever, and they don't live the way that the Bible teaches, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You get you get with them, and you're not telling your kids in judgment because you know, this is, but they need to know that this is wrong. Like in class today, somebody brought up that. Um, you talk down to the women at this house. <clears throat> and women are not respected the way that they should be in the house. And so you don't sit there and you tell them how to live their life. You should do this, you should do that. But your kids need to understand that that's wrong, even at a young age. Hey, yeah. did y'all see that what was going on there? And a lot of times the kids will be truthful and they'll, they'll say something about that. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how impressionable young kids are. Yesterday, I went over to Trey Story's house Okay. And, and drop off Kinsley to babysit their kids for a little while, and and when I got there, he was he was out the tray was outside and he was picking up stuff out of the yard and you know doing things and he didn't have no shirt on, mm -hmm. you know. So you know I can't do that around my neighborhood because I mean man I make all the dudes look bad. You right. know, I, my <laughs> wife can't get nothing done. Nobody's you know, no longer looking, looking at your yard. I'm just saying, man, it's like, like hey, I was up you here. know making people stumble. It's terrible. So anyways. Yeah. But I can't, you know, I can't do that, you know, but Trey Story can. Yeah. And so Trey Story was out there, you know, cleaning up, picking up stuff. And so little Bo, the three, we were going to a birthday party and, and the little three-year-old Bo, he wanted to go with us. Yeah. And so we're just driving down the road, little Bo's in the car, he's as sweet, cute as could be. And out of nowhere, something was said about some uh, Brooklyn shirt, she had a little stain on her shirt and Bo just up and says, when I work, I, I like to take my shirt off. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Bro how Brooklyn's how old? But, huh? How old? Brooklyn, she's uh, six. Okay. But Bo, a little three-year-old, he says, when I work, sometimes I like to take my shirt off. Now, we hadn't said nothing about his dad yeah. or nothing, but he saw that. He right. sees that. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Impressionable. And he's impressionable. And now, so, I, know, I know this is a, a minor example, right? But he's three no. years old. He's three years old. And he's picking up on something that he sees a lot. Yeah. Right? And so how much more impressionable can we be on our kids when they're picking up on things that they see a lot? Mm -hmm. This is right? this is negative and positive. You That's know, right. your, your son or your daughter, whatever, your kid is going to latch on to either the, the, the man or the woman, the, the daddy or the mom, <clears throat> and their tendencies. Uh, mine around my house, my wife like uh, my wife is an artist in the kitchen, so I have a daughter that kind of clings to that. My son does things; it doesn't matter biblical or 
just everyday things. He's doing things just to um, do what daddy does. He sees it every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to do things. I'm not going to talk to people this way. I want to stand up out of my seat to shake somebody's hand and look, look them in the eyes. You know? That's right. I'm going to not let a woman walk behind me at, through a door. And, um, and it's not for them for their blessings because I was taught this way. And I'm not going to, I had this guy one time, uh, actually a guy here, he says, he says, don't call me sir. My daddy's a sir. And I'm sure he knows who he is. And he tells my son, don't call me sir. And I, and I, he said, yes, sir. <laughs> he does not know how to get out of here. I know. Sir, because it was instilled in him. Yeah. This is not do as I say, not as I do. Because you have to go to... Uh, Whenever they're children, whenever they're toddlers, mm-hmm. it's easier to, you don't say yeah and then expect them to say yes, sir. Right. You say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, and, and it'll catch on a lot quicker because you are doing, practicing what you preach. It, that My son, when he was little, he always said, if, if, he, if he made a statement, he would say, right, daddy? Like he was asking me yeah. the question. Because, you know, it was important that what he was doing that he was affirmed by me. And so that's how important it is that we get the mind. Well, if you have a kid's heart, you can have their mind. Because um, if you know what they thrive off and what they need, they need love and they need discipline. So, and God knew that. God Mm -hmm. set it up the same way for us. But uh, when you do that, that's when you're speaking volumes into their little lives so that they know what's important not just to you but what god says yeah, yeah. because we're that picture of that impressionable child that's right to our heavenly father i mean well what you said is a, we only gonna get so many right daddies that's it you know what i mean that's it. because eventually they get to a place where they ain't ain't asking us. No That's right. It's you know not. I mean? Yeah. And uh, man, brother Dave, brother David said that we have we have all the influence over our kids whenever the kids are born. You have this much influence on, and this much of their self. And every year that they get older, that it's less influence of you and more of what they think yeah. and what they grabbed hold of. So you only have mm-hmm. a certain window to be able to put the Bible into them and put consistency into them. Because without them too, you're you're uh, leading them to a double-minded man, which is unstable in all of his ways, right. which is in James one eight. Yep. Um, yeah. So that being said, we're on the wheel. So the wheel is controlled. There was something that he wrote on here. What do you say? Parents must school the will of the children in obedience. So that was where we'll read the scriptures first, Ross. Mm-hmm. Uh, Genesis 18, 17 through 19. Okay. And then we'll, we'll uh, get into it. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after them, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, and that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Yeah. So whenever they're little, <clears throat> the, I've been taught um, at this church, you break the will, you don't break the spirit. Um that's better for under seven years old, under three years old. Whenever they, if my kid does bad, and I tell them, I tell a three-year-old, don't do that. That's bad. They ain't gonna learn because the Bible is that proverb say that we was talking about mm-hmm. that if you do not punish your child, you, you hate them. You hate your child. That's right. You don't punish your child. You hate your child. You ain't disciplining your child and disciplining the way that. Uh, of the 80s, not of this day and age. I don't know what. Do you think it, You think we need to start talking about going to bed right now and maybe thinking about it? What do you think? What do you want to eat? They're a child. They're waiting for you to provide and for you to lead them. So suck it up and do it. Or well, quit the, having kids. The verse says that, it says right here that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. He said that 
Abraham should command his children. It didn't say ask them what they wanted to do. It says command, and that means, but that word command is to lead and show as an example. Right. So Abraham was doing what God told him to do, and then from down, that was passed down to his kids. Uh, I'm sure there were several stories between Abraham and his children about what God had done in the future, or I mean in the past, and what he will do in the future, because yeah. God made him a promise that he was going to make him a nation uh, as as more than the sand of the sea. That's right. So, um, yeah, he got the good and the bad of that. Yeah. Train up a child the way they should go. That's right. Because the line followed it too, right? That's it. That's yeah, exactly. from our week one. Well, Brother Todd preached this past Wednesday night, whatever the day was there. With that. that would be August the, what was Wednesday? Anybody know? Mm-hmm. Four days ago. Four days ago. From, I don't know. It, it was Wednesday last week. How about it that? It was Wednesday it was of this week, of this nah. past week, whatever it was. But, <laughs> That is a great message if you weren't there Wednesday night to go back and watch that 110% coincides with this week's oh, yeah. life group lessons. Joshua 24, 14, and 15. And the end of 15 basically says, but as for me and my house, we will serve, will the, serve Lord. the Lord. Mm-hmm. And and it's and it's important that it, there's, there's two things about this lesson that really stuck out to me. Number one, it's important to be teaching our kids about what matters to God. Yes. Right, which is righteousness, holiness, them them giving them their heart, surrendering their life to Him for right. salvation. Yes. Right, yes. because without that, without that foundation of salvation, ooh, without the foundation, that, that's like some brother Tom. That sounds pretty stuff. good. Anyways, yeah, I like it. Without the, without that foundation, without them having the salvation, it's, it's gonna be it's a lot harder to to instill in them the principles of the Lord because it, it can't be confirmed in their spirit. Right. That's right. But what happens is a lot of times as parents, especially with our oldest ones, right? We, we understand that we have a responsibility to raise our kids and, and we have a responsibility to help them see the Lord and hear the call and surrender to salvation. Mm-hmm. But what if as a church, that's all we did, yeah. right? And so what happens is we do that in our home. Our kids get saved and then we think it's our job's done, right? Yeah. But just as much as it's important to, to see our kids get saved, we have to also train them up to understand their gifts, their callings, as Todd would say, the bend of their bow, yeah. right? I mean, we yeah. do it here. We get saved. We go see Brother David. We take spiritual gift tests. We take love language tests. Mm-hmm. We discover things about ourselves. We mm-hmm. discover our calling, the things that God has, has laid on our lives. The, the, the callings of God are irrevocable, it says. Gifts irrevocable. And right? The gifts and callings right. of God are yeah. irrevocable. So we have to be just as intentional about our children's salvation as we are about their growth their growth in the bend of their bow um i my son my son is saved my son is saved yeah um he is he is a good kid he's a hard worker he's saved um i made a lot of mistakes when he was a kid i did not i was i was i was concerned with his salvation and it made me so happy to see him get saved. But he's strong-willed. And strong will is not a bad thing. Strong-willed means that child is going to be a leader. That child is, is, is made to be a leader because you ain't going to back him off of what he believes in. But where I messed up at, and I hate it, and it's hard. And I know the Lord will restore it, and I know he's, he's working now in it. Mm-hmm. But I hate the fact that I, I, I tried to change the bend of his bow. As opposed to embracing him, as opposed to embracing who he was and who he wanted to be, I was always comparing him. Well, why don't you be more like this kid? Yeah. Why don't you be more like this kid? This kid's this way. You should be more like that. As opposed to understanding how to correct him in love and directing him right, and and really embracing who God had made him to be, yeah. and helping him understand how to transform into God's image and not mine. Right. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think every parent does that to some extent. Mm-hmm. I I believe that um, you know we we truly want what's best for our kids, but I also believe that sometimes you know we want them to be like us, and that's not who what God you know 
God doesn't want them to be like us. He wants them to be like Him. Amen. And um, and sometimes we put too much pressure on them. Uh, God has a plan for their life, just like yeah. He has for ours. There's a balance. Um, the will that we're talking about. Um, so every one of my kids got a different, you know, you break their will, not their spirit. <clears throat> Whenever my kids were little, one only got one only got her butt busted twice because the other two got because I said all oh, y'all line up. The other one assembly you, line spanking. That's right. The <laughs> other one you show her the paddle and it's done. Yeah. You ain't got. You really don't. I mean, it's. A, I'll do anything. What did you want me to not do? That's what I ain't doing no more. Just leave that. Keep that thing away from Some me. Some of them you yeah. just look at them. Yeah. Now, yeah. And then that other one, that strong will. Yeah. It's a, it's a bring it on, and I, I get it over with. I'd rather that than a grounding because then it almost, it's all over with. But they all, I mean, people, people in public, they talk about. I mean, I'm not letting my right hand, left hand know what my right hand's doing. People in public, if you raise them up that way, they're like, oh, your kids are so good. They're holding the door open for me and say, yes, sir, no, yes, ma'am. It's right. no, like. That's what they're supposed to be doing. That makes me proud when someone says that about my son. It made me, not me. It made me sad for the world. Because, I, well, mean, I mean, yeah. They're, okay. Yeah. Your kid's good. He didn't steal nothing today. Mm. He wasn't, was he supposed to? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's the expectation? Is that, is that, our, me is that our measure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our standard? That's yeah. right. So that's the, that's the worldly standard there. We're not on that. We're, we're on, God keeps us on a different standard. Yeah. So we're running out of time. So we're going to go to the conscience, uh, the positive that came from the fall. Conscience by itself is a goal, not a guide. Mm. So it can mm. be altered. Uh, your conscience, your conscience says, let's don't steal. Okay, well, we knew that before we went to church. Uh, but the the more thieves you hang around, the more your con, the more your conscience is going to bend to where you don't think it's as bad as it mm -hmm. as it usually is. So let me ask you this: um, What if a child is in a family, and that all that child sees is uh, criminal activity, doing the wrong thing? That child doesn't know any better. That's right. And because so, they're tra training up a child. That's, got, that's right. Okay. So you look at all, throughout all humanity, all the people back even bef like Abraham, Esau, they all went their own way until Jesus came and he was the way. And uh, look how many people don't know any better about salvation and about Christ and about all that kind of stuff. So we could change the world. Yeah, when I, when I first started coming here one time, I remember we were in some class or something, when it was some kind of life group class or meeting, and I heard somebody say, I just don't understand why anybody would want to get drunk and, you know, da-da-da-da-da and da-da-da-da-da. And I thought to myself, well, I mean, some people, that's just what they're raised up to do. I mean, you know, it's... Yeah. That's just what you do. You yeah. know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. if you were raised up in a way that didn't lead that type of lifestyle versus a way that did, you probably wouldn't understand it. That's but exactly. somebody else might understand it, right? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not making an excuse for it or saying no, it's yeah. good. I'm just saying sometimes we gotta we can't be we can't be so stuck in our box that we can't meet people Amen. where they're at. No. I've heard a guy say Amen. You, you this is a different subject, but right. If you're talking about this, uh, somebody that done all this, then you got the other side of the road, which is legalism. Right. So I can't understand why somebody would do it. Well, they're sitting in legalism right there. There's a middle of this road, that the narrow way that God tells us in Matthew seven thirteen, I believe it. Was. Jesus is the narrow way. Yeah. So that's, the, I mean, we're crossing it. Yeah. I preached yesterday. Right after I got done preaching, I went over there and I had to go repent because of something just come out of my mouth. Ten minutes later, I mean, I went from right here to right over there that quick. And okay, now we can relate that. Mm -hmm. If your kid is watching that, they're gonna see that you're unstable. Yeah, double mind. A double mind, mm -hmm. unstable in all your ways. Yeah, I like one of the points it makes in here about the conscience. It says this is why it is vital that conscience be bonded to the Word of God. And we know that the Word of God mm -hmm. says to to test all your thoughts and hold them obedient. Hold them, hold them obedient, make them captive to the Word of God. Right. Yes. It says in here in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, I'm sorry, that's not right. 3.16? 2 
Yes, that's where I was trying to go. Yeah. Second Timothy, I had it on the wrong page. Yes, okay. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God right. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. And it says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Yeah. That's a good word. Amen. And the Bible verse that it brought me to think about is that we should teach our kids is Psalm chapter 1. Um, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates day and night. Amen. 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 That's a good place to stop. Next week we're still going to be on Proverbs 22.6. Uh, we're going to be in, it talks about people don't care how much you know until you, they know how much you care. Mm. So that'll be, again, the same verse. So y'all study up, see what y'all got, and then maybe y'all can uh, see us around here. Same time next week. Y'all be blessed.